Let's give you a tip for every single hero in Clash of Clans. Strengths, weaknesses, things you had not thought about. Whether you are a lower Town Hall level, right of the way up to Town Hall 13, there will be something for all of you in this video, so let's dive into it. Welcome back to the channel then guys, I'm your host Judo Sloth, let's get straight into this one then. We will be starting with the Barbarian King, unlocked at Town Hall 7, then we'll move to the Archer Queen, unlocked at Town Hall 9, the Grand Warden, unlocked at Town Hall 11, and finally your Royal Champion, unlocked at Town Hall 13. I will be giving you lots of tips for all of them. Now we previously did the video where we gave you a tip for every single troop in the game, I will link that at the end of this one this is the hero edition and we will also be bringing you a tip for every single spell in the game so if that's the type of content you want to see i bring educational but entertaining clash of clans videos i'd recommend subscribing and turning on the notification bell so you don't miss out on my content also guys you can support me by putting code judo in game but let's start off with the barbarian king the first hero you unlock in Clash of Clans is your Barbarian King, and I wanted to make sure that you used him to his strengths. He is a tank, he's got a lot of hit points, so use him to absorb the fire from the defences. Now I have some tips to use him for funneling as well because he's very easy to track where he goes. I did bring you the funneling explained video getting into the nitty gritty, but you want to use the Barbarian King to tank for the Archer Queen or some other troops. Use him similar to the Barbarians and the Archers. The Barbarian King absorbs the fire, the Archer Queen shoots over the top to take them down. Now it's not that you have to use the Barbarian King in order to tank at the start of the raid. What I used to do when I was a Town Hall 7 and 8 is I would actually use the Barbarian King to tank on the back end of the base. For example, when dragons come through, I would use the Barbarian King to tank back end Archer Towers. As you get higher up in level, you might not rely on your Barbarian King as much because you've got troops and heroes like the Archer Queen, the Royal Champion. However, I would highly recommend using the Barbarian King to set up your funnel because he does a brilliant job at that. Check out this example where he is deployed to purely take out the trash buildings on the outside of the base. Now, all we mean by trash buildings are that they will not attack attack your troops, it's the resource buildings, the barracks, the army camps, them style of buildings and your barbarian king is often used to set the funnel for your minor or hybrid style attack. In this instance it is used purely for the Sui Queen, now we will be getting to the Sui Queen example later on in this video, but notice the barbarian king takes out some of the buildings and is going to continue doing so around the top area of the base to allow the archer queen in. Now the Barbarian King's ability is what really makes this good and it's why he's good as a funneling troop. With all of the Barbarians on the outside of the base, they can power through the dangerous areas and ultimately keep the Queen on track through the middle of the base to get her primary target in that of the Scattershot, which is hugely advantageous at Town Hall 13 to take that down and it was all thanks to the funneling from the Barbarian King. King. The Archer Queen is unlocked at Town Hall 9 and she will very quickly become your most powerful and probably your favourite troop. She does a lot of damage, so for that reason, generally speaking, you want her into the base itself. Now, the method you see here with the healers is known as a Queen Charge or Queen Walk. I will give you some tips on that in a second, but I wanted to highlight the importance of getting the Archer Queen into the base, so I'd highly recommend watching the Funneling Explained video that I made last week in order to ensure that you do that, because when you get her onto the inside of the base, she can give you a bit of reliability to take down clan castle troops, to shoot over walls, to get the dangerous defences, and you've also got that ability once you get her to level 5 to ensure that you can quickly adapt and take out areas of the base, but let's tell you about the method there with the healers. 
An Archer Queen walk or charge is one of the most popular uses of your Archer Queen, so let's give you some tips for it. This involves using healers on top of the Archer Queen. Because she does that high damage, you can keep her healed up. Now, you might be asking me, what is the difference between a Queen walk and a Queen charge? A Queen walk is sending your Queen on the outside of the base. A Queen charge is sending her on the inside of the base. And I will be doing a video on this shortly, so be sure to subscribe to see that. Now at Town Hall 10, we are coming in for the multi inferno. A hog rider lures the clan castle troops because you always want to take them down. I want to showcase the importance of the rage spell. You want to place this on top of the queen in order to boost her damage, but also make sure you get the healers in that as well so they are healing the queen incredibly quickly. So placement of that spell is very important. Now, once the clan castle troops go down, we've created funneling either side for the queen to come into the base here with the jump spell. She can take the multi inferno critical at town hall 10. Irrespective of your level, you want to think about key defenses for the rest of your attack and also setting up funneling as part of this queen charge. It's very similar to any kill squad that you would do. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on kill squads. Maybe that's a good idea for us to bring you that. So in this example, the queen charge has driven into the base, taken out huge amounts of defenses, but created pathing for the hog riders to come around the base, which is really critical. And they are some quick fire tips for the archer queen charge. I referenced this earlier, but I want to give you some tips on the Sui Queen method. This is a brilliant use of your Archer Queen, and you might be sitting there thinking, Judo, what on earth do you mean by Sui Queen? This is the Suicide Hero method. You can do this with any hero. I will show you an example with the Royal Champion, but you are sending them in to get a specific part of the base, and then that is it. Now, you can use just your heroes, or you can also send some support troops. I'd highly recommend the ice golem if you are to use one of the troops for this because the tanking you get the freeze effect can just really help and you might need some funneling troops but the barbarian king helped out now we want to get the archer tower the town hall and the grand warden statue that is it once them buildings go down we are happy the queen can die at that point she's set up funneling for the lava loon and she's also got really good value now part of the skill is identifying how how much you can get, not over committing and missing your plan, but recognizing that you just want to get the right amount. And in that instance, the queen took down the final objective as she went down. So it was perfectly planned not to commit too much and use too many troops, but not to plan for too little. It was literally perfect. And that will be some skill and planning and a lot of practice to get that down. The Grand Warden is a support style hero. You can use him on ground or air and he will help to boost the health of the troops within his aura. You can see that with the thin line around him. So really use that to your advantage. Use the Grand Warden with the main part of your attack, but his main advantage is his ability. Now this will take all of the troops within the aura and make them immune for a set period of time. So it makes sense that at Town Hall 12 and above, you use this for the Giga Bomb, especially with troops that would go down without it. However, at Town Hall 11, you probably want to use this to absorb the fire from an Eagle Artillery shot, or it really does depend on the troops you're using, but make sure you are using the Grand Warden's aura with Hog Riders or Balloons or Mass Masses of troops that would go down over the Giga Bomb. So like we mentioned, the Grand Warden's aura, it really is the bit you want to take advantage of, especially with the main part of your attack. But I wanted to make you aware that you can use it throughout the attack. I'm sure many of you might have knew this, but maybe you are starting out with a queen charge. Do not wait to put the Grand Warden on the main part of your attack if you can use him on the queen charge first. Now, this could be the difference between you using a rage, the queen's ability, or a free 
Freeze spell and not. So the Grand Warden can boost the health of the Queen just that little bit and then, as you see here, just merge in with the troops anyway, which he would have been deployed with. Now it may or may not make the difference, but if you have more spells for the rest of your attack, then that has got to be a good thing. So if you can use the Grand Warden, make sure you're considering it. The other instance where you might use the Grand Warden early is to funnel. Now I know I've mentioned funneling a lot, but it is because the heroes are very good at it. And the Grand Warden, whilst you can use him early, remember you do want to use that aura with the main portion of the attack. So the Grand Warden will then be used to supplement the rest of the raid, but that's actually where this is good. He's very easy to control because he will turn into support mode with the troops. You'll see what I mean. But the Grand Warden has greater range, so not only can he set up the funnel on a cave you might be able to reach defenses in the base such as a multi-target inferno I did a whole separate video on this as well actually the Grand Warden positives negatives everything but just know that you can use him to set your funnel and he's very easy to control because as soon as you're done place the troops he will move across to them and then you are getting the added boost of using the aura as well the royal champion is the newest hero to clash of clans and she's also my favorite hero you can let me know yours down down in the comments. Now my favorite way to use the Royal Champion is to side swipe the base because she only targets defenses. So the Yetis and Bowlers are dealing with everything at the top. Meanwhile, the Royal Champion comes in to side swipe the bottom of the base. So notice how she comes down and purely targets defenses whilst they are tanked, which is hugely important. And she also helps to keep the Yetis and Bowlers on track through the middle of the base. So I highly recommend using the Royal Champion to side swipe the base, but there's a lot of different uses which I'll show you, including the Seeking Shield. What an amazing ability that is, which you've just seen. I've got a pretty sweet example of it at the end of the video. For the Royal Champion, I want you to be aware of the importance of the single target Inferno and pressing the Royal Champion's ability early. If the single locks onto the Royal Champion, it will be able to take her down even if the the automatic ability goes off before she can use her Seeking Shield. So you have to make sure that you use the Seeking Shield en route to it. It's the only chance you have of taking that down, but you might need some other troops or a freeze spell to help support her. We showed you the Sui Archer Queen method. Now let's show you the Sui Royal Champion, often referenced the Sui RC. Now there's a few advantages here. The Royal Champion only targets defenses, so you don't really have to set up any funnel for her as you do with the Royal Champion. Ice Golems again can be really useful, but remember if you're charging a single target Inferno, which is often the goal, you will want to use the ability early, use a freeze, and again, perfect time here to just as the Royal Champion falls, get that final objective. You probably want to charge scatter shots, Eagle Artillery, Single Target Inferno, something of significance, but the Royal Champion Sui method can really be advantageous, so make sure you are looking at areas of the base that might be susceptible. This was one of the best uses of the Royal Champion's ability that I've ever seen. I had the privilege of casting the ESL Meistershaft event. Where this took place, you can catch my live streams on Twitch, Facebook, and Trovo down in the description. Links will be. But be sure to be aware of defenses at the opposite side of the base because the Seeking Shield can get over there incredibly quickly. And it might be the difference between you failing on time and getting the three star. So waiting patiently, Scarlet on this one uses the Seeking Shield and there it goes right of the way across the map to ensure that this one ended as a three star. Now we've had a lot of different raids from a lot of different attacks in this video. I want to thank you guys for coming through and showing support. If you do want to see the tip for every single troop, I've put it on the screen right on my face. You guys will enjoy that one and be sure to have a good one. We will see you in the next video.